All right, I know what you're asking. Why on earth would I sell such a gorgeous house for $55,000 if it really was worth a quarter of a million dollars? Well, number one, this isn't the house that I sold. It's actually a different house. And it was one of my favorite properties that was in my portfolio, but I absolutely had to sell. Now, I'm sure in this video, it's really obvious what this is of. You see it back there? Can you zoom in? Is it obvious what it is? Those hills there are the Great Seal Park in the state of Ohio. It's on all of the stuff that we do in the state of Ohio. It's a Great Seal Park. And you can actually see it from the front porch of this house that I sold for $55,000. And the kind of thing is it probably should be worth a quarter of a million dollars. But I sold it. I think there's a pretty good lesson to learn here why I would do something so crazy as to sell such an expensive property for such little money. Be sure to like and subscribe while you're at it. I would really appreciate it. And there's a sign up for M1 Finance where I made a little over $31,000 last year in the stock market. And there's also a mini explainer video of how I use them to fund my real estate purchases. So my involvement with this house started in the first part of 2016 where I bought it for a princely sum of $27,000. My friend Sean owned it. He had purchased it for $15,000, used it as a rental, and he really couldn't make a ton of money off of it. He constantly had bad tenants on this place. And since I figured I could do a better job than Sean, I decided to purchase it and put about $10,000 in it. So after it's all sent in, I had $37,500 in this cool, decently sized four bedroom, two bathroom home with a full basement on a hill in a really great location. After we got it done, I rented it out for $750. This was about July, 2016. And guess what guys, it stayed rented. I actually did really, really well with this property. Over the course of my five years of ownership, we had a grand total of three separate tenants that lived in this property. And although there was maybe a month and a half to two months worth of downtime, it stayed very much constantly rented. Oddly enough, this is the second property I bought off my buddy Sean. He could not keep them rented, and I did a really, really good job of keeping it rented at, over, at well over $700 per month, which represents over a 22% gross return rate. That is the rent I charged divided by the price that I purchased it for. And since it was fun, I figured I would actually load up my Appfolio income statement on this and see that we made a little north of $36,000 since I threw it into Appfolio and it started actually tracking the numbers, which that would have been September the 1st, 2017, which if my math is correct here, that comes out to $763 per month in gross revenue that this four bedroom house accumulated, even though I only paid $37,000 for it after renovation. Now I know that a lot of people are going to say, well, what about the repairs? But they weren't too bad. A little north of $5,000 over the course of about four years. That was my biggest cost other than property taxes, which were a little over $4,000. Not too bad, but not too great either. Now those numbers get even better when you consider that we only had it occupied for those three years because it's been listed for about the last six or maybe seven months after my last tenant moved out so they could go work for a Catholic TV station and the state up north that I never like to talk about and not that station. Now I'm not going to call myself stupid, but I certainly look less smart when you realize that the neighborhood properties are selling easily for a quarter million dollars if they're recently renovated and similar in size. And some of the properties are selling for well north of $300,000. I couldn't find the, the recent sold, but there was one that sold, I think, probably within two or 300 yards of this place for about 400000 maybe $350,000. So this deal, as far as most people are concerned, keeps looking weirder and weirder because I sold, yes, it's not a great house, but it's in a great location and it's gigantic and has a totally unbeatable view. But so far in the video, have you noticed that there was something wrong I imagine the established real estate investors might have noticed what was wrong on one of the, the cost statements I posted just a few seconds ago. Did you notice it right here? It's my three-year cost log for this property. General repairs were less than $1,400, yet the plumbing was right around $4,000, almost four times higher. And unfortunately, it's the intriguing tale of why you should be very cautious with buying a house on the side of a giant hill. Unfortunately, it's falling off the side of the hill, which kind of kind of sucks. 
If you look at this video kind of in a slow motion type deal, you'll see that they built a retention wall on the south side of the property probably 25, maybe 30 years ago. It was pretty cool, but there's only one downside, they did it wrong. Granted, I am not a rocket surgeon nor a civil engineer, but if you look at this video, they did a nice retention wall, but the problem is if the wall gets full of mud and water, that's a bad thing. See, what happens is water that comes down from the top of the hill to my property, which sits in the middle of the hill, all that hydraulic pressure will actually build up and either push the property off the side of the hill, which is what it's currently doing, or you can channel it around the house and go somewhere else, which is unfortunately what needs to be done. And it's kind of expensive. Now last year I went out and got a couple bids for what would it take to fix this problem and for better or worse it came out to $40,000 if I would hire a firm to do it or if I got a bunch of friends together rented some excavating equipment we could get it done for about $25,000 but it was several weeks of hard labor and me not being able to do anything else including managing my properties which has been taking a lot of my time and generally is a pretty profitable venture for me to be involved in. Now what's kind of weird is it took quite some time to sell this property. Even with me disclosing the problems with the foundation, a lot of that was due to a company called BlackRock that's in the news and they're kind of infamous right now because they've been going through and buying a lot of single family detached homes. One of the buyers that came forward very early on to purchase this property gave me a cash offer but was contingent on the sale of one of their other homes and they were supposed to clear about $140,000 cash out of their prior uh, property sale from either BlackRock or a company that looked exactly like them. Sadly, after about three weeks, I discovered who it was buying the property and the property was actually in a near identical situation with a foundation issue and long story short, BlackRock walked away from the deal and the buyers didn't get their money. So we tied up almost about a month on the market and they, uh, they weren't able to buy it. So we had to relist it and it started this whole process of me wasting nearly four months to sell this home. Then about three weeks ago, someone came forward, they gave me an offer, called a foundation company to come in and take a look at the cost to do exactly what I wanted to do, and it was to the penny, $40,000 to get it done. So now they are in the process of rehabbing the home. Generally speaking, I estimate they're going to put about $50,000 in the renovation of this property on top of the $40,000 that they're going to have in the foundation work. This will put them in the neighborhood of around $100,000, maybe $90,000 um, to get the house fixed up. But the sales price is going to be right around my quarter million dollar estimate. Now, the other play that they have here is they could do an Airbnb here, do the location overlooking everything, and they could make an additional $250 per night, 30 days a month. That would be, what, $7,500 a month in rent off of uh, full occupancy. I realize that's a high figure, but they've got some options through this, and I can certainly use the money for some cool projects on my other properties. So there you have it. Reason that it makes sense for me to sell a $250,000 house for $55,000. I don't have the time. Plus, I've got another dozen houses to sell that'll net me about 600 grand. Thanks for watching.